One of the most important things in game development is optimization. If you ignore it, you can run into serious issues, especially when it comes to performance and FPS drops. Now, optimization can mean a lot of different things. It could mean optimizing your code, reducing the number of objects, or improving how assets are handled. But a big factor that often gets overlooked is the number of draw calls. So what exactly are draw calls? Every time the GPU is told to render something, like a mesh with a material or texture, that's a draw call. The more materials and textures you're using across your scene, the more draw calls your engine has to process. And that can seriously slow things down. For example, if you have 10 different objects, each with its own material and texture, that's 10 draw calls right there. But if those objects all share one material and one texture, that's just one draw call. Huge difference, right? And that's exactly why I built this new Blender add-on. It automatically merges all your materials and textures into one, helping reduce draw calls with just a few clicks. Whether you're exporting to Unity, Unreal, or any other game engine, this saves time and keeps your scenes lightweight and optimized. So let's dive in and see how we can use this. As always, when you download the add-on from Gumroad, you will get a zip file, just drag and drop it into Blender. Now on the side panel, you'll see Material Merger. I have this model, which has different textures and materials applied. For example, the top part has a different material, and the bottom part has another. Let's merge these materials into one. First, select all the objects you want to merge, open the Material Merger panel, and click on the Add button. You will see that the selected objects are added. After that, give the new material a name, and in the Texture section, give your new texture a name as well. Now set the texture size, by default, it's 512, but let's change it to 2048 for a sharper result. Then, click on the Edit UV button. This will open the UV region. Here, you can use Blender's default UV packer or any third-party UV packer. Blender's built-in UV packer is decent but not perfect. As you can see, it doesn't pack UVs efficiently and there's a lot of wasted space. I recommend using UV packer a free add-on that packs UVs more efficiently and makes better use of space, resulting in a more detailed and crisp final output. Since it's free, it's definitely worth trying. But for now, let's use Blender's default packer. Click UV, then pack islands to pack the UVs. After that, go to the layout tab, where you can choose which channels to bit. For now, let's select all channels. Below that, you'll see options for margin and max sampling. Margin adds a 2 pixel border around UV islands after baking. If you set it to 0, you'll see seam lines. If you set it too high, the textures will overlap. A value of 2 usually works great. Max sampling determines the quality of the bake. Increasing it will give better results, but it also increases baking time. If you have a powerful machine, you can raise it. Otherwise, the default value is fine. Now click bake, depending on your hardware. This may take some time. Once it's done, you'll see there's not much visual difference between the original and baked versions, but now all objects share one material and texture. The best part is, this process is non-destructive. You can select all the baked objects and click remove to delete them. Since the original objects are still in the scene, you can unhide them and click add again to restart the process. This gives you a lot of flexibility. You'll find the download link in the description, and if you're an indie game developer, this add-on can save you a ton of time and headaches. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.